evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about energy transforms in a pendulum system for um, SHM. Now in a previous video I talked about how we got this formula here. This time period is 2 pi the square root length over gravitational field strength. And I did this question here where I had um, a 1 meter pendulum that had a 10 kilogram mass on it and uh, it was the amplitude of this oscillation was 0.5 meters and we calculated all sorts of information about it. We calculated the time period, the angular velocity, the, uh, the maximum velocity it would feel, and this would feel it at the bottom, and the maximum acceleration it would feel as well. And what I want to talk today is about energy transfers and actually use this question and prove how this part of the formula actually matches up with some energy stuff. So with this kind of oscillation here, I have got GPE, okay, GPE, kinetic energy, GPE, kinetic energy, and then maximum GPE again. So if I was to actually draw this, there's a lovely graph here. So if I had a graph that looked like this, okay, and we're just going to grab this one, I think. And I wrote this as the amount of potential energy. And this is time. What I would have here is I would have, at the start, I would have a maximum amount of GPE. And then it would go down and all of it would be converted into kinetic energy. And then it will be GPE again at the top. And then it will be down to kinetic again. And then it would go back to where it started. And it's important to realise that this, this cycle here, that, that would be your time period for your oscillation. Because you go to maximum GPE, to no GPE, because you've only got kinetic, to maximum GPE again to the other side. So if I drew it, Underneath, GPE, none, whoops, like that, none, and then back again. As you can see, one oscillation is these two oscillations for GPE. Another way you could, you might see this drawn here, so this is just a way of describing it through time. Okay, is that you may see, okay, you may see this whole idea here of these graphs here. So you might see that kinetic energy does that. So the kinetic energy increases and goes down. So I'll pull this KE. Get red one. So if I write amount of energy here, so this is not potential energy, this is just energy. So this here is my kinetic energy, it's at time, starts at zero, goes to a max and goes to a peak again. And up here, I'm going to do, whoops, that is my GPE. And my GPE is starting at maximum, going to zero and going to maximum again. Now, my total energy in this system, okay, at any point in time, if I added all these points, would be that. Because at any point, I have this much energy. So if I said this was 10 joules, at any point, I will have 10 joules worth of energy. It might just be GPE, it might just be KE, or it might be a mix of both. So there are certain points here, so if we can imagine here, 10 joules of GPE, here, well, I've got three, uh, eight joules of GPE, so I've got two joules of kinetic, but I still only have 10 joules in my system. So you may see a, a thing like this, this is actually showing only half a cycle, because I'm going from not moving, to maximum kinetic, to not moving, GPE, maximum kinetic, over here, I've only got half a cycle going on, but what it can tell me is the total energy in my system. 
this kind of graph here. So it's slightly different from looking at our GPE kind of question, uh, G look, just looking at the potential energy. And what I actually want to do is I want to use this question with GPE and kinetic energy to actually prove that these formulae are right. So, and that I can use all of this information for what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to draw this a little bit bigger. So 10 kilograms, and the length of this object is one meter, and the amplitude here is 0.5 meters. Okay. So what I'm just going to swing, and it's going to come down to this point here. So this here is my change in my height. I'm going to need to calculate it. But this is actually really clever. I know that my string is still going to be one meter here. So I know all of this will be one meter. So if I could work out this length here, I could work out this my change in height. I've got to do that with a little bit of Pythagoras. So I know that a squared is b squared plus c squared. Well, that is the hypotenuse, and these are the two sides. So I know that 1 squared is going to be 0.5 squared plus my unknown squared. I'm just going to rearrange it. So where did I put it? There it is. 1 squared minus 0.5 squared is 0.75 equals my question mark squared. So my question mark equals 0.87 metres. So that distance there is, let me just put this in degree, 0.87 metres. Which means my change in height here, okay, is going to be 1 minus 0.87, which is 0.13 metres. So I can actually work out my GPE here. So GPE is MGH, so 10 times 9.81 times my 0.13, and I get a number of times 9.81 times by 10, I get 13.1 joules. Kinetic energy half mv squared. So I'm assuming that all of my GPE is being converted into kinetic at the end. So all of this is being converted into my velocity, into this kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out what my velocity would be. So 13.1 is a half times 10 times v squared. Okay, so 13.1 times by 2 divided by 10 is 2.63 equals v squared. I'm just going to square root that. And I'm going to get an answer of v is 1.62 meters per second. And if you look at my answer over this side, which was 1.57, and I will point out I did round up here. This was actually 2.0006. What I've got here is I have got evidence that this actually worked, but only works for small angles. So this approximation that I've got here is working perfectly for my approximation here. And that is energy in a pendulum system.